Good day, Junior Techies. I'm Mrs. Brimmick. We are going to look at Chapter 7, Audit Reports and Corporate Governance. Make sure before you start with all the activities that we're going to do, that you go through the booklet, keep it on hand with you while completing the activities. It is imperative that you make sure that you study this content. Corporate governance and audit reports is lately asked as the standalone topic and this forms part of paper one. Looking at activity one, you are provided with an extract from the audit report of the independent auditor for Marvel Limited for the financial year ended 30 June 2021. Required 1.1 up to 1.8, we are going to look at each one of those questions. If you look at how the information is given, they provided you with an extract from an audit report and given you point number one up to point number five. So if we look at question 1.1, briefly explain the difference between an internal auditor and an external auditor. So number one, an internal auditor is employed by the company, whereas an external auditor is appointed by the shareholders. The shareholders are the owners of a company. Internal auditors report directly to the directors of a company whereas external auditors report to the shareholders. Thirdly, an internal auditor examines issues related to the company business practices and risk, whereas an external auditor examines the financial records. Internal auditors conduct audits throughout the year whereas an external auditor expresses an opinion on the financial statements of a company. And then lastly, an internal auditor examines all the records intensely, whereas an external only uses sample tests to select documents for verification. Make sure that you understand the difference between internal auditors and external auditors. Question 1.2 asks now to refer to point number 1 up to point number 5. What type of audit report did the company receive? So if you look at what I've highlighted, point number 1, unable to obtain sufficient audit evidence. Point number two, liquidity has been compromised. This is not in accordance with the provision of the Companies Act and international financial reporting standards. If you look at point number five, we do not express an, an opinion. Now remember that there's four options. Either an unqualified, qualified, disclaimer or an adverse opinion. This qualifies as a disclaimer or they withheld the report. Question 1.3 refers to point number two. Explain why auditors should refer to the International Financial Reporting Standards and the Company Act. So if we look at point number two, It says there, which is not in accordance with provisions of the Company Act and International Financial Reporting Standards. The reason why it should refer to the International Financial Reporting Standards and the Companies Act is because a company operates on a global market. The company is influenced by global economy and the exchange rates. The company engages in international trade and investors may come from all parts of the world. So this is the reason why it needs to adhere to the Company Act and International Financial Reporting Standards. 
Question 1.4 says now refer to point number 4 and point number 5. Outline examples of ethical responsibility and audit evidence. So if we look now at point number 4, ethical responsibilities. No colluding with management to overlook any material matter. No accepting of bribes or engaging in corruption. Care taken in completing the audit and expression, expressing the opinion. Readers can rely on the information in the financial statements. So this is what we refer to when we talk about ethical responsibility. When we talk about audit evidence, we talk about source documents provided by external organizations used for verification. Check the internal control and that the auditor has done his or her job properly. An audit committee should be appointed to assess the internal and external audit process, work with internal auditors to ensure that internal controls are efficient. Policies and procedures of the company. So this is what we refer to when we talk about audit evidence. And here, just to have a look, the basis for this audit report, because of lack of audit evidence and significance of the matters described above, we do not express an opinion. Question 1.5, explain what the director could have done to prevent this comment by the auditors, if we refer now to point number two. Ensure that internal audits and directors comply with the Companies Act to the letter. Cash in the investment. Postpone the repurchase of shares to another time when liquidity has improved. Issue more shares to the public to improve the debt equity ratio. Offer higher dividends to shareholders rather than to repurchase shares. Remember that when a company decides to buy back shares, they need to be liquid and solvent. And now in this case, the auditors noticed that the liquidity has been compromised because of the repurchase of shares. Question 1.6. State possible consequences for the independent auditor if he had not mentioned the challenges in point number one and point number two. So if we look at what are the consequences, number one, a disciplinary hearing. Two, they can be arrested for fraud, deregistered or struck off from the role, suspended during the investigation, they can be fined and they can be sued by shareholders. In other words, they can be held liable, lose clients because his integrity is questionable. So it's very important that they need to report on any irregularities. Question 1.7. Why is the audit report addressed to the shareholders? The auditors are appointed by the shareholders. They are the owners of the company. They own shares in the company. The directors just run it on behalf of the shareholders. Question 1.8, explain why the external auditors report stipulate the numbers or the number of pages audited. Auditors gives clarity on their responsibility and liability for the pages audited. Thank you very much. I want to leave you with this quote. A little progress each day adds up to big results. Next, we're going to look at activity two. Have a wonderful day.